Hello everyone. So like uh, Guy said, after lunch, a nice dance. Now we're ready for uh, more spiritual material. So welcome, I'm Richard Lachance from uh, Quebec City. I, um, I'm here to talk to you about something uh, that is close to my heart, the uh, spiritual frame of reference. So here we see a, a, a man looking for solutions, trying to understand the universe, trying to find where he is and uh, what's his role. So he's exploring new horizons. And let's, uh, let's do that today, together. So, um, first, let's start with... Uh, uh, sorry, let's, let's move back to previous. Okay, let's start with the temporal frame of reference. My talk will be about 30 minutes. So how did we come here today? We're here in uh, Lenoxville, in the Bishop's University. So this morning I was in Quebec, and uh, I used a little device called uh, JPS. You know this little box in your car or either on your cell phone that tells you where you are, where you should go? Raise your hand, how many of you have a GPS either in your car or in your cell phone? Okay, so you know what I'm talking about. So this, this, slide, this little device is, uh, I find it wonderful. You type in your destination, it tells you, take this highway, take this exit, turn left, turn right, and then how? We're at destination. So that's what I did today. I typed in uh, the coordinates, 2600 Cottage Street, and uh, I got here safely. I could enjoy the ride, I could uh, look at the scenery and uh, not worry about the, the route to take. But I must admit I took the wrong exit. <laughs> but no problem, the JPS gently said, oh, take the next one and come back and take this road and pow, I was on, on track again. So this called a global positioning system, it's based on the uh, satellite system or, uh, around the Earth and it's a uh, quite handy tool. So I knew where I started, I knew where I was going, and I got the means to get there. So what about our own lives? Do you know where you are? Do you know who you are? Do you know the uh, answers to the existing questions? That's what we're going to explore today. What are those exist existential questions? Who am I? Where do I come from? What is this place I'm living in? Why am I here today? Is there meaning to all of this? And where am I going? What's the purpose of my journey, my goal, my destiny? Where shall I go? What about the means to get there? In short, what is the meaning of life? So I hope every one of you at some time in your life asks those fundamental questions. And I hope that you find the answers. Well, one of my spiritual teachers once told me, it's like if we were waking up in a bus and not knowing where we are, where we're going, I would find this personally quite stressful. Is there a driver in the bus? Is there a destination where I'm going? I'm surprised to see that many people are not even asking those questions, but I'm sure you are. So we might feel lost in the jungle, not knowing what's happening, we need to find some frame of reference in order to guide us. Where's the north? Where's the south? How can I find my way out of there? Well, there are answers. When I was young, my father used to pray at night, Saint Antoine de Padoue, donnez un sens à ma vie, aidez-moi à trouver le sens à ma vie. Saint Anthony of Padua, please give my life some sense of purpose. Well, our prayer was redirected to higher authorities, I might say, in the universe. So our, pray our prayer was directed to God and Jesus, and our home was blessed to find the Urantia book in the early 19 1980s, when I was young. So we found all of the answers to our questions and more. 
we found the Our Lord's Prayer quite useful for giving us a sense of purpose, for giving us answers. Give us today our bread for tomorrow. We've been reciting this for years. Do you know the true signification of this? Refresh our souls with the water of life. So what those two verses truly mean, give us a spiritual frame of reference. Jesus said, you can be nourished by the eternal word of God, which is indeed the bread of life. So give us today our bread for tomorrow. This is some kind of answer to that. And you can be watered in soul by the divine spirit, which is truly the water of life. So the Father has sent me into the world to show how he desires to indwell and direct all men. And I have so lived this life in the flesh as to inspire all men likewise ever to seek and know and do the will of the indwelling Heavenly Father. This is quite powerful. Each time you recite the Our Lord's Prayer, take this into account and try to see how this can be a frame of reference to your lives. Do you know that we have a cosmic JPS? I call this my God personal savior. <laughs> so Jesus just told us that we are all indwelt by this super force. So tell me how many of you raise your hand who has a JPS, a cosmic JPS? <laughs> well, we all have one. That's what Jesus re revealed to us. What's, that's what the Urantia book tells us. We are indwelt by a cosmic God personal savior, a system of guidance of supreme power. So the same way I got my way here today, we can get the same trust and confidence into this interior guide. Let's explore that a little, for, little further. So let's get some insights to those fundamental questions related to the teachings of the Urantia book. So where do I come from? It's quite simple. We come from the infinite love of the Universal Father himself as part of a magnificent plan. We are conceived, born, raised, trained on this evolutionary planet, our planet named Urantia, in a galaxy far, far away. Let's look at our cosmic pedigree. So where do I come from? We come from the grand universe of the second age. We are born in the super universe number seven of Or Orvanton, in the major sector number five of Plandon, minor sector three, Ensa, in the local universe of our Father, Michael, Christ, Jesus, Nebadon, constellation number 70, Norlatiadek, system number 24, Satania, and planet number 606, named Urantia. This is the catalog number of our planet. So we are in a very real, tangible universe. These are our geographic coordinates. We are far, far, but at the same time so close. We are far in distance from the center of the universe, from the central island of paradise where God himself resides. But at the same time, we are close because God himself lives within us. So that's a cosmic paradox. That's fantastic when you think about it. You can travel all around the universe. You can go anywhere and you're bringing your personal JPS with you. So we are never alone and we are never lost taking the advice of this gentle guy. The Eternal Father is at one and the same time farthest removed from and most intimately associated with his planetary mortal sons. Interesting paradox. Thank you, Father. Our Lord's Prayer starts with Our Father who is in heaven. Wonderful. Our Father, we are all the children of a single father, thus the family, the fatherhood of God, the brotherhood of men. Who is in heaven? Where is heaven? Heaven is above, at the, central, at the center of the universe, 
and is also within, within us. So you can have heaven right here today in you, living the era of light and life in your heart, while at the same time working for getting the universe evolved and one day get into the era of light and life. Who am I? The evolution of our relation with God has evolved along the years. First from a stage of slavery to a jealous God. Then it evolved to a servant of God. And with the fourth revelation, the life of Jesus, we've been revealed that we are beloved children of God. We don't have anything to do to win this status. We are beloved children of God. And now we are moving a step forward. We are now revealed that we can be partners of God. We can be teaming with Him. We can be His tools in this universe. But we have to say yes. We have to want it. Of course, we are sons of God, but we can go a step further to team with Him and let Him work through us. Why am I here? To do the will of God, to follow an essential career, a magnificent plan, to go to the animal stage towards perfection in partnership with God. That's as simple as that. Isn't that beautiful? The transcendent goal of the children of time is, you know what this goal is? To find the eternal God, to comprehend the divine nature, and to recognize the universal Father. That's our goal. From the universal, universal Father who inhabits the eternity, there has gone forth the supreme mandate. God has asked us directly one thing, which is, be you perfect, even as I am perfect. A challenge for us, little animal beings on a far, far away planet. So we are commanded to grow by evolution from the finite, limited, material, animal stage to the infinite, the perfect, the spiritual chain state. What a challenge. Is this possible? Why would have God asked us such a challenge if it wouldn't be possible. Yes, it is. Although we are imperfect now, we are perfectible. And we have all the means to get there. God has put in place a large program, lots of efforts, numbers of beings to help us. So remember this. We might be imperfect, but we are perfectible. We can do this. Experience evolution, a, a recurrent theme throughout the Erentia book. This is primordial. This is part of our lives. Why should man bemoan his lonely origin and enforced evolutionary career when the very gods themselves must pass through an equivalent experience before they are accounted experimentally worthy and competent finally and fully to rule over their universe domains? Jesus himself, the creator son of this local universe, did this program also. He came to this planet and he lived the life of his beloved children. So uh, we have no right to bemoan and to criticize, criticize this tremendous chance we have. So let's look at our benedictions. What, what are those tools that God has given us? First, we've been given a physical frame of reference, the hardware, the body, the electrochemical body we're living in, animated by life. Then we are giving a mental, spiritual, uh, mental frame of reference. I call it the software. The software is what drives the hardware. Without Windows or Mac OS, your computer doesn't work. So. The men, the, the, our mental, our mind is the force driving our bodies. And then we have lots of other help, exterior help, like adjusted mind spirits. Then the spiritual frame of reference. We are all indwelt by those thought adjusters, mystery monitors, co-creating our souls. We could talk hours on all of those subjects. I'm just picturing it rapidly here. And we have a, all an enclosing personality. And exterior influences like the uh, spirit of truth of the um, 
Creator Son, the Holy Spirit of the Divine Minister, plus a plethora of beings helping uplift us, like our guardian angels, archangels, etc., etc. So we have everything we need to get to this exciting journey. It's, it's been said in the Urantia book, mine is your ship, the adjuster is your pilot, and the human will is, your captain, is the captain. We are the captain. We are in command here. We can do what we want. We can even say no to God. That's profound. But we can also, yes, please guide my ship, guide my mind in order to reach to destination. How poetic what is being revealed to us through the Urantia book. The master of the mortal vessel should have the wisdom to trust the divine pilot to guide the ascending soul into the Morontia harbors of eternal survival. With your consent, with your yes, this faithful pilot will safely carry you across the barriers of time and the handicaps of space to the very source of the divine mind and beyond, even to the paradise father of adjusters. Faith is to religion what sails are to a ship. Once again, we have all the material we want, we have, we need, I mean, to get there. But all of this is only temporary lent to us. Our life is not for us to, to decide. We can die tomorrow. We can have a car accident. We can get sick. So it's very important at this time to take the right decision. Our mind is related to the body, and even our thought adjusters will stay with us as long as we don't say no. This brings me to the next subject. I'm asking you, how much does God love us? A little bit? It cannot be measured. He loves us infinitely. And infinite is a very, very big number, if you can... I know what I'm talking about. So, in order to be infinitely happy, we need to be infinitely free. Ask yourself, what, as a parent, how can I love my children the most? If I were to be God with an infinite love, what would I do for my children to bring them to this infinitely happiness? So this is the free will. In order to be infinitely free, we need to be inf uh, infinitely happy, we need to be infinitely free. So with our free will, we can, we can uh, say yes to God. God steps aside and lets us choose our own destiny. We can choose if we want to join him and say, wow, it's, it's exciting, I want this, or not. God wanted us to want him. It amazes me. We little beings, at the end of the evolutionary chain, we can say no or yes to our Heavenly Father that gives us everything. So he chose to need us in order to reach personality through a fusion with our beings. How loving are you, God, for having planned all of this for us? But now it is for us to use our free will and decide, what do I do? Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. This is my favorite verse of the Our Father prayer. It is my will, it is my own choosing to do your will, God. It will be my greatest blessing. So do you know that this is the only gift we can give back to God? Because all the rest have been given to us. And then we can say, God, yes, I want you. And I use my free will to decide today on this planet, not tomorrow. Some people say, oh, we'll die and we'll see. It's not the same. We can use this free will today and it will decide our faith. If I die tomorrow and I haven't decided what will happen of my person on the other world, yes, God will, he will, bring, me, he will bring me to him, but it will not be the same. Today I can say, yes, God, I trust you, I want you, I love you in this dark world. Tomorrow on the mansion world, everyone will say, yes, yes, it will be easy to say, me too, but it will not be the same. Isn't that beautiful? Yes. Are you excited? Yes. What is beauty? You. What is beauty? Beauty is the union of contrast, unification of contrast. Variety is essential to the concept of beauty. 
So what is the ultimate beauty? What is the most beautiful thing you can think of? What are the highest contrasts you can think of? The supreme beauty, the height of finite art, is the drama of the unification of the vastness of the cosmic extremes. Creator and creature, the infinite with the finite. We cannot think about higher, a largest contrast. Man finding God and God finding man. The creature becoming perfect as it is the creator. That is the supernal achievement of the supremely beautiful, the attainment of the aspect of cosmic art. So my brothers, my sisters, you are all artists. You are all part of this plan. And you can be this, those supernal artists that will unite the infinite and the finite. God will do his part. He comes to us gives us his hand, and we can do the same halfway, saying, God, yes, we want you. So, where am I going? God has planned a magnificent journey inwards, toward the center, towards him, the center of all things and being in his marvelous and friendly universe, to his majestic home in the central island of paradise. So that's our immediate destination. We'll do everything we can to, to get there. This will be our home too. We are part of this friendly universe, so everywhere, everywhere is our home. From where we will start again, once we have met God, we will start our eternal plan of service in the universe. Our eternal mission of perfection and service in the master universe for the eternal ages to come. So that's where we're going. This is a picture of uh, our small planet, Urantia, today. We're going to do our training, moving from one step, one sphere to another, going to uh, the central of the uh, local universe, Salvington, going to the central of the super universe, Uversa, and then to the island of paradise, our home. And then, will that be it? You think God will let us sit there on the cloud and... No, no, then the fun will begin. Then we'll have lots of work to do in the outer space. So that's a brief summary of our journey. God has embarked upon the eternal, eternal adventure with man. If you yield to the leadings of the spiritual forces in you and around you, you cannot fail to attain the high destiny established by a loving God as the universal goal of his ascendant creatures from the evolutionary, evolutionary worlds of space. Wow, I'm amazed. This is my big picture. This is my frame of reference to build my life and guide my steps. Can you realize the true significance of the adjusters in dwelling? I, I, I'm amazed by this, this verse. You really fathom what it means to have an absolute fragment of a, the absolute and infinite deity within you, the universal Father himself, in dwelling and fusing with your finite mortal natures? When mortal man fuses with an actual fragment of the existential cause of the total cosmos, no limit can ever be placed upon the destiny of such an unprecedented and unimaginable partnership. Think about this. So, how long will this take? How long for us from animal stage to meet God in person? No one knows. I think it will be quite long. Some students of the Urantia book are talking about hundreds of billions of years. Maybe. Whatever, I'm in my eternity right now. I'm enjoying the trip because the treasure is the journey. Everything is in the present moment. That's all there is. So right now, I'm a part of this eternity. There is no yesterday, tomorrow. I'm doing the best I can. And the first thing I'll know is that I will stand in the very face of my Heavenly Father, saying, kneeling in front of Him and asking, how can I be of more service, my Father? What's next? There is in the mind of God a plan which embraces every creature of all His vast domains. And this plan is an eternal purpose of boundless opportunities, unlimited progress, endless life. And the, and the infinite treasures of such a matchless career are yours for a striving. Isn't that beautiful? Yes, it is. So why all of this trouble about evolution? Some people say, why does, didn't God 
creators perfect in the first place? Well, ascendant beings like ourselves can become versatile and dependable as well as become, as will become by going through the tremendous, profound personal experience acquired by actually climbing up this, the stairs, climbing to glory from the dark domains of space. No one will have this experience in the whole universe except for us. We, can, we will say, I lived every step along the way. I know everything about the universe because I lived it. This is a, a beautiful gift we have. Therefore, therefore, should we be ever grateful for our lowly origin and our capacity for experience. If we fully embrace this program down here today, constantly reiterate, reiterating our choice to engage with God, we have the privilege to become something very unique, that is an agodonter. You know what this is? I'm going to show you what an agodonter is. Remember this picture. This is an Agodanter. This is us. Evolutionary will creature who can't believe without seeing, persevere when isolated, and triumph over unsuperable difficulties even when alone. This is the opportunity we have on this planet. Once again, we have to say yes. The ascendant children of time have learned to feast upon uncertainty, to fatten upon the disappointment, to enthuse over apparent defeat, to invigorate in the presence of difficulties, to exhibit indomitable courage in the face of immensity, and to exercise unconquerable faith when confronted with the challenge of the inexplicable. Long since the battle cry of these pilgrims became in liaison with God, nothing, absolutely nothing is impossible. Wow. What we can become, this whole divine plan and the survival experience of mortal ascension is the greatest security against rebellion and the surest safeguard against sin. Does this plan work? You think uh, God has done all of this for nothing? Yes, it works. During the Re Lucifer rebellion, it's been clearly demonstrated. Not a single Jerusalem citizen was lost. Every ascendant mortal survived the fierce trial and emerged from the crucial test triumphant, altogether victorious. The angel core was decimated, but the essential pilgrims, not a single soul was lost. What an adventure, what a romance, a gigantic creation to be administered by the children of the Supreme, these personalized and humanized adjusters, these adjusterized and eternalized mortals, us, such amalgamated beings, such partnerships of creator and creature, will become superb rulers, matchless administrators, and understanding and sympathetic directors of, a, of any and all forms of intelligent life which may come into existence throughout the future universes of outer space level. Jesus came to this planet to experience this himself, and we have the opportunity, too, to get there. Let me tell you a story. Three stone masons were working together and were asked what they were doing. The first said, I'm carving stone, shaping stone. The second said, I'm building a wall. And the third proudly proclaimed, I'm building a cathedral. Same situation, three different views, three different visions, three different frames of reference. So what are your saying? With which stonemason do you associate? I personally, I'm building a cathedral with my father. I'm not the architect. I'm only putting my stone into this gigantic base. And I'm proud to be associated with this. One day this whole cathedral will stand and I will say, I'm, I'm part of this. I did my, my, my job and I will, do, I will build other cathedrals later on. So this first world is but a step. We've just started building the foundation and we will not see the end result in this humble life. But one day we will because 
the plan of God will prevail and will succeed. Neither will we see our names engraved in the stones as we're ready to work in the shadow for the glory of God alone. In Latin we say, ad mariorem dei gloriam, for the glory of God alone. If you have the chance, go to YouTube and type The Invisible Woman. You will see a monologue about five minutes by Nicole Johnson explaining this into more details. So don't forget, Invisible Woman, YouTube. I'm amazed when I see a bird, when I see a young child grow, I say, thank you, God, this is marvelous. But when you think about it, who actually designed and build this bird. There are lots of beings involved with that. There are life carriers that design those birds, that use the sparkle of life of the divine minister. But do you see the names of those life carriers in the feathers somewhere? No, we see the, the end result and we thank God for life and for this beautiful child growing, evolving. So that's what, it say, that's what I mean when I say to work in the shadow. With God, we will do marvelous things together. But we will always say, for the glory of God. Because God has planned everything. He has put on the canvas. He has given us pencils. He has given us colors. He has given us talents. So we'll put all of this together and to create beautiful creations for the glory of God alone. Hallowed be your name. That's what I, I understand. Let's, your name shall be sung, your name shall be glorified through my actions for your glory alone. Your kingdom come, your kingdom of love of enlightened life come where I will work for this kingdom to come on this planet and to evolve the whole universe. But this kingdom has already come into my heart. The greatest pronouncement Jesus ever made next to the declaration that his father is a living and loving spirit is that the kingdom of God is within you. You have inside of you a cosmic JPS to guide you. And you are, if you choose, you make the click, you decide. You're in this kingdom. It's a matter of personal choice. Victor Hugo wrote a beautiful poem. Personne ne voit l'autre aspect du destin, le trépas. Personne ne voit rien. Alors j'ai le choix, n'est-ce pas? Vous avez votre goût et moi le mien. Après tant de souffrance, le désespoir vous, prêt, vous plaît? Moi je prends l'espérance. Et puisque selon vous, rien n'est certain, rien n'est sûr, vous choisissez la cendre et je choisis l'azur. Two different frames of reference. One saying, no, no life after death, we're going to be destroyed like some ants. And the other one says, yes, I see the whole picture. I know who I am, I know where I'm going. So who among the two is right? They both are right. That's primordial. If you choose to reject the plan of God, if the, if the eternal life is not of interest to you, God himself will not force you. So we'll, you'll have what you want. But if you say yes, instead, if you don't say no, God will bring you to him and offer you the eternal life. So that's quite important to make your own decision and have your proper spiritual frame of reference. Yeah, but this jungle is quite uncertain and insecure. But uncertainty is part of this whole adventure. Uncertainty with security is the essence of paradise adventure. Uncertainty in time and space and mind in regards to the events of the unfolding paradise ascent, but at the same time, security in spirit and in eternity. Security in the unqualified trust to the creature son in the divine compassion and infinite love of the universal father. Uncertainty as an inexperienced citizen of the universe, but security as an ascending son in the universe mentions of an all-powerful all wise and all loving father. That's our father. I cannot say my father is stronger than yours because we have the same father, but our father is strong. So yeah, we have an amazing program in front of us. 
we have begun an endless unfolding of an almost infinite panorama, a limitless expanding and never-ending, ever-winding spheres of opportunity for exhilarating service, matchless adventures, sublime and uncertainty and boundless attainment. There are many exclamation marks in this sentence. When the clouds gather overhead, your faith should accept the, pr the fact of the presence of the indwelling adjuster. And thus, you should be able to look beyond the mist of mortal uncertainty into the clear shining of the sun of eternal righteousness on the beacon beaconing heights of the mantra world of Satania. How poetic this is. Jesus portrayed this himself. I found this quote amazing. The downfall of nations, the crash of the empires, the end of an age, the end of the entire world itself. What have these things to do with one who believes this gospel, who has hid his life in the search of the eternal kingdom? I view this as if God holds in his left hand the whole universe with all of the, the galaxies and the personalities. And is in, in his right hand he holds my soul because I have given him my soul and he protects it. So, how can we be afraid? If tomorrow the airplane crashes on my next trip, I will not say, oh God, God, okay, I believe in you, now it's the time. No, it's too late. I will simply say, God, meet you soon. Thank you for this first life and ready to serve in the next one. If I die in my sleep tomorrow, will I have made the, the decision before going to sleep? Will my decision be clear? Every morning I tell the universe, I tell the, my Heavenly Father, Father, my decision is clear. My choice is made. You know it, I know it. My fusion with you, with you is only a matter of time. So now, how can I serve you? Cathedral builders are not to be disturbed by temporal upheavals and perturbed by terrestrial cataclysms. What does it matter to you who believe this gospel of the kingdom if nations overturn, the age ends, and all things visible crash, since you know that your life is in the gift, is the gift of the Son, and that is eternally secure in the Father. So that's why Jesus was so calm in, during his life. He knew where he was from, he knew where, who he was, and he knew where he was going. We should do the same. So in summary, have you found the answers to the fundamental questions in your life? I hope so. Personally, I can say, God has found me, and I have found God. I have the certitude of the divine. People ask me if I have faith. I say, no, I don't have faith, because I know. It might seem a little pretentious, but as a mathematician, I know that 2 plus 2 makes 4. I don't pray that it will still be the same tomorrow. Let's hope that math will stand because 2 plus 2 still makes 4. No, it's a fact. It's, a, it's my foundation. So, that's my personal testimony. Now I have a proper spiritual frame of reference on which to build and direct my life. I know in which bus I am, and I know who's the driver, and I know where I'm going. I'm not afraid anymore. What's the great goal of human existence? To attune to the divinity of the indwelling adjuster. To listen to the voice of our personal JPS. What is the great achievement of mortal life? The attainment of a true and understanding consecration to the eternal aims of the divine spirit who waits and works within your mind. A devoted and determined effort to realize eternal destiny is wholly compatible with a light-hearted and joyous, joyous life and with a successful and honorable career on earth. That's a total different vision that we have now. Let's work together and let's succeed and let's win. The sons of God enlisted together in fighting the battle of reality triumph over the partial shadows of existence. Now we are out of time. We are out of these sequential facts. At last, all creatures become conscious of the fact that God and all the divine hosts of a well-nigh limitless universe are on their side. In the supernal struggle to attain eternal, eternity of life and divinity of status, we are living in a friendly universe. 
tremendously beautiful universe. Such faith liberated sons have certainly enlisted in the struggles of time on the side of the supreme forces and divine personalities of eternity. Next quote is one of my favorite. Even the stars in their course are now doing battle for them. At last, those evolutionary beings gaze upon the universe from within. I can say, God, look at your universe through my eyes today, right now. Look at how beautiful it is from God's viewpoint. And all is transformed from the uncertainty of material isolation to the sureties of eternal spiritual progression. Even time itself become but the shadow of eternity cast by paradise realities upon the moving panoply of space. So my friends, the goal of eternity is ahead. The adventure of divinity attainment lies before you. The race of perfection is on. Whosoever will may enter and certainly and certain victory will crown the efforts of everyone who will run the race of faith and trust. Depending every step on the way of the leading of the indwelling adjuster and on the guidance of that good spirit of the universe son which so freely has been poured upon our flesh. So my father, I'm yours. Take me. Thank you. <laughs>